The state sets the values, which are fictitious values, and we're addressing that at the state level, which is why Representative Costa is here. That's one issue, but it's not cloud. The second issue is that by Rhode Island state law, each city and town is allowed to offset that by giving their taxpayers a $6,000 exemption. So if you take that $6,000 exemption on your 1991 truck that you have, you have no tax, okay? So these values are 20 to 30% overvalued. That we address on the state issue. On the local issue, we say, well, why did they take that $6,000 away? Well, in a year that you have a deficit, why are you giving out raises? In a year that you have a deficit and you're adding an additional tax to a gentleman like this, why are you giving out free health care to part-time employees? Um, my husband and I are late bloomers, went to college, got our degrees. Um, taxes like these are just going to cause more brain drain. And um, if things don't change, we'll be taking our degrees that we probably, you know, we probably received at Providence College and URI and taking them elsewhere. And the reason I started attending city council meetings was the last big tax increase we had a reevaluation. My neighbor got me to go. He was going to do all the talking. All right? I wound up at the microphone. He went home early. He's moved to Virginia. He moved to Virginia three years ago, and he keeps calling me. When the hell are you getting out of there? If we can start getting our fiscal house in order. You know, you all have budgets, right? Yes. What happens when your income goes down a little bit or your health care goes up? And something happens in your house. The boiler goes. You have to figure out on how to make do with the money you have, right? You people do this every single day. So why can't government do this? I'm going to tell you why government keeps won't do it. They won't do it. And why won't they do it? Because they don't have the courage and conviction to make the tough decisions. You know what? We don't want to see public safety officials lose their jobs. We don't want to see teachers getting fired. We don't want to see municipal workers and, and the trash collection not you know, those people get that. We don't want that. We want good services. We're willing to pay for good services. But when we see our taxes go higher and higher and higher every single year, are we getting any new services? No. When's the last time your roads were paid? I was on the city council.
at the end of the year, if you don't use your sick time, you get paid for it. Well, guess what? We have a sick pay bonus program in the city of Warren. When you don't use your sick pay, you get paid. Now, where I work, if I call in sick and I'm not sick, I get fired. I don't think we need to pay people bonuses for coming to work and doing their jobs. Do you agree? Yes, sir. So, why aren't these things eliminated? You know, during the 80s and 90s, the heydays, the dot com, everything's going great. Maybe we could afford to pay people sick pay bonuses. Maybe we could get free retirement health care for everybody. But guess what? We can't afford that anymore, right? So what do we need? We need elected officials in these seats and in the front office that are going to come out and make some tough decisions. It's a crime that these people are going to hopefully get 50 cents on the dollar. So what can we do? Let's be honest with them. We've got to be honest about the unfunded liabilities. And like Gina Raimondo says, it's a simple math problem. We can't afford this stuff. Someone's lying to us. The bottom line is, these council people and this mayor don't have to wait for Gina Raimondo. They don't have to wait for the General Assembly. They just passed pension reform for future employees. They need to pass pension reform on current employees right now, and we have to stop looking at the pension. Well, contrary to popular belief, there is no free drinks tonight. We're here for two reasons, and two reasons only. So let's all keep our eye on the ball, ladies and gentlemen. The first reason that we're here is to formally request to get on the docket for a public hearing so you people can fo focus and face these people and tell them about what you're going through because they don't care. You have six council members and a mayor that are fiscally incompetent. And unless you're here every day, they're not going to win. You know what they did? They oh, you took me out. And that's why nothing is going to get done until you get people working together. And you hear what this man just said? Right. Nothing's going to get done until we have people working together. You know what? We're going to send shivers up the spine of these elected officials. Why do you think that they're, they're booting the door and they have two armed guards on the finance committee meeting? You would think they're counting gold down there. They're counting your money down there. But yet we have a finance committee with no formal education. And we're wondering why our taxes are going up. Why? Because everybody's saying it. They are fiscally incompetent. If you really care, you'll be here at every council meeting. The times to get here are awful, 5 o'clock. Why do you think that is? If they had a finance meeting at 7 o'clock, they'd be blowing the roof off this building and putting an addition on it. They have orchestrated this to keep you out of the fiscal business of this city. Are you going to take that or even do something about it? I had it. I'm not paying any more taxes. It's over. How? We're going to pickpocket you. These taxes are confiscatory, period. Now, I'm not that concerned about me paying my extra $600 worth of car taxes. I'm a young guy, and I work hard, and so does my wife. But this city is built on the hard work and efforts of senior citizens, retired veterans, and those are the people that are getting hit the hardest. And in the last two weeks, myself and several other people have handed out five or 6,000 flyers. I've seen senior citizen women cry to me that it's my car tax or my medication. I spoke with one Vietnam veteran right out in front of City Hall that told me he couldn't pay his car taxes, so his registration was revoked, then his license was revoked, and now he's on foot. But the council president has free lifetime health care for a part-time job. Is that fair? You know what? 
It's time to get involved, folks. You got two choices now. You stay involved, you speak with us, we establish a method of getting in touch with you on a regular basis, or put your home for sale, take a hundred thousand dollar loss, and get on a dodge. Because this city is going down the tubes with the people that are, what are they? They are fiscally incompetent. We need now to focus on the city issue about why do they need more tax money. That's the issue that we have to focus on. Mun municipality unions are coming to the table and they're recognizing the fiscal crisis. But not the mayor of Warwick. We're going to keep giving out raises. We're going to keep adding taxes. Be surprised if you get another supplemental real estate tax this year. It's coming. We got more raises to pay for. It's coming. We need fiscal conservatism and we need smart people to handle this. And the only way you're going to do that is to get these people out of office, find some fine people, and straighten out Warwick's problem. That's all I have to say about that.